Well, they may not have known Bandit, but the people who gathered at the Duncan SPCA today to remember the three-month-old pit bull puppy say his death was not in vain. About 60 people attended a memorial for Bandit, who was beaten to death on New Year's Day. 24-year-old Brent Malcolm Connors admitted to killing the pup, and last week he was sentenced to six months in jail. Community interest in the case has prompted animal rights groups to call for stiffer sentences for people who abuse animals. The, the whole thing together, that it's going to make a difference. I think we're going to, we're going to go forward and, and we're going to work on changing laws. And I think that this group is, is not going to let this just, just because bandit's gone now is, and the sentence is in, we're not just going to let this go. We're going to make sure that, you know, this doesn't happen anymore and that we're there for the animals in this world. Organizers say today's memorial offered people who were outraged by bandit's death the opportunity to overcome their anger and grief. Animal rights groups are calling on everyone to pressure members of parliament and MLAs to stiffen and enforce animal cruelty laws. Well, for people who couldn't attend the memorial for Bandit in Duncan today, a walk was held in Victoria along Dallas Road. <laughs> About 200 people brought their dogs to Clover Point to show support for Bandit and to condemn the killings of 100 sled dogs near Whistler last April. Organizers say the response to the event was overwhelming and they hope it sends a strong message not only to lawmakers but to people who believe animals are disposable. You know, I think today is really a fine example of how much more willing people are to become active in their roles in defending animal life. You know, we've domesticated these animals, we've brought them into our lives, and it's just up to us to speak for them and help them, you know, become part of our lives and, you know, respect each other. And A News reporter Stephen Andrew will have more on the challenges prosecutors face when enforcing animal cruelty laws later in the show. Well, as we showed you earlier, animal welfare groups are calling on the government to stiffen penalties for people who abuse animals. Their call to action comes at a time when the SPCA investigates the deaths of 100 sled dogs near Whistler. The dogs were killed in April and reports indicate the canines were shot and buried in a mass grave. Now, the story has brought outrage from across the country and Premier Gordon Campbell has set up a panel to investigate the killings. Here now with more on the story is A News reporter Stephen Andrew. Well, however this case uh, pans out at the end of the day, there are going to be some challenges. Generally, the laws governing animal rights in Canada are a little tough to deal with. Joining us to talk about this is the Associate Professor of Law from the University of Victoria, Manisha Decker. Thanks for coming in. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you. Why are animal rights laws so difficult, uh, animal cruelty laws so difficult to deal with? Well, um, there are several reasons. They first... Um, are kind of narrowly focused so the whole definition of what is cruelty if you look kind of how these cases the very few cases that come forward are interpreted is really um, based on uh, dominant cultural norms so it has to be something really heinous for example the the dog sledding case right that attracts public ire so outside the bounds of how we normally treat animals for it to be labeled cruelty in the first place. So are there other countries that have moved forward or more progressive with their animal cruelty laws? There are subtle differences, but in Canada is a common law country, so we get our legal heritage right from Britain, and so that's really where you have the genesis of anti-cruelty legislation on which our model in the criminal code, for example, nationally, is based and um, some would say our laws even though they were slightly tweaked a few years ago for penalty purposes um, are, are quite archaic in structure uh, reflecting the sentiment at that time so centuries ago the focus and kind of what galvanized support was to look at blood sports you know the everyday kind of bloodletting of animals on the street right in, in London let's say and um, the kind of uh, rationale was that if we cultivate kindness toward animals, we'll cultivate kindness toward humans. It was never really an animal-centered law in the first place in terms of why it was passed, if you look at some of the literature. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we kind of inherited that structure. So anti-cruelty, or the topic of cruelty, really goes just to very kind of heinous acts outside the cultural norm. It doesn't really mm -hmm. touch upon and range And I, and I guess the challenge is going to be, how do you prove cruelty? Yes. So because I mean, you don't have a witness there to actually say, "Well, I felt this," right? I mean, right. And so that's a concern that comes into all types of prosecutions, right? The, the normal evidentiary concerns, um, but you can also have uh, defenses that you know the alleged perpetrator may try to advance as well. And really, Stephen, you have to have kind of the um, 
in a resource strap, let's say, prosecutorial environment, you have to have the will and um, the kind of uh, resources backing up any individual prosecutor to, to gather the evidence that's needed. In your research, do you see that changing? Not really, no. Unfortunately, uh, the recent kind of case that came down yesterday in British Columbia about the puppy that was beaten to death, that's heartening because the sentence that was received is above the norm, you know, from my research mm -hmm. on what is usually handed out in the very few cases that are prosecuted. So do you think it's going to be judicial reform, political reform, or public pressure that at the end of the day will make a difference? Um, I think it will have to be both, right? So I re in, in, it's very interesting because Canada, we can you know, kind of see ourselves as socially progressive on many issues, right? But on w how we compare with other countries from common law traditions, even European Union is um, not too favorably. So I think it's going to be public pressure to get the lawmakers working, plus judicial. Manisha, thanks very much. I do appreciate you coming in. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you for having me.